What is time? Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are delving into a captivating and age-old question that has puzzled humanity for centuries, what is time? Join me as we embark on an intriguing journey through the depths of this enigmatic concept that seems to govern our lives in countless ways. So sit back, relax, and let's unravel the mysteries of time together. What exactly is time? When did time start? When will time come to an end? Is time an illusion created by the human mind? Is it possible to travel back in time? Everyone has been asking these questions for a long time. We made every effort to provide definitive answers to these complications. Despite our best attempts, time continues to be a fascinating puzzle that provokes disagreement and debate. One intriguing concept is that time is only an illusion, a fabrication of the human mind. Could it be that time as we view it is a subjective experience formed by our consciousness rather than an objective reality? Furthermore, the concept of time travel adds another layer of ambiguity to the debate. Is it feasible to travel into the unfathomable depths of time, backward or forward in time? And, if true, how can humans get such feet? It's not as difficult as it sounds. Consider the following scenario. On a beautiful morning, you pay a visit to a very dear friend, and to your surprise, you discover a time machine in her living room. Taking advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, you and your companion embark on a series of exhilarating adventures into time's unknown frontiers. You will travel together to see the magnificent dinosaurs that once inhabited the Earth. You then travel to the ancient city of Constantinople in 1453 BC, causing some mayhem in the bustling streets of that bygone era. Not content with that, you are taken to the key year of 1969, where you witness the historic moon landing occur in front of your eyes, preserved in grainy, black and white footage from the period. Among these enthralling adventures, your companion confides in you, her voice full of determination and a feeling of purpose. She confesses that she has a mission of tremendous importance that requires her to travel back in time, somewhat before her present moment. You watch as she passes on her expertise and instructs her younger self on how to build the time machine that has enabled these incredible travels. However, as you consider the complexities of this circumstance, a query emerges, tinged with caution and wonder. You stammer, afraid of offending or disrupting the delicate balance of time. But, if you utilize the time machine to travel back in time and learn how to build it, won't that create a paradox? Because no one in this scenario ever sat down to figure out how to build a time machine. This is the bootstrap paradox, which describes an indefinite cause and effect loop that forms around information, an object, or even a person in a time travel scenario that can no longer be assigned a discernible point of origin. You join your pal on yet another expedition eager to explore the ever-shifting corridors of temporal potential. This time, you find yourself in the presence of a prominent physicist known for her time-bending theories. In an unexpected turn of events, you observe your friend engaging in a heated dispute with the physicist, who happens to be her future self. As your friend's future self seeks to persuade her previous self to leave her research, the temporal dilemma paradox develops before your eyes. The future self is adamant that delving too deeply into time's mysteries will have disastrous effects, unraveling the whole fabric of existence. That your friend's former self is resolute, sure that unraveling time's mysteries will usher in a new era of comprehension. You become vividly aware of the Pandora's conundrum developing around you as you view this entangled meeting. The need to know the future collides with the tremendous implications it can have on molding that future. The question looms large in the air. Is it ethical to tamper with time and change the path of events, even if done with the best of intentions? You go on a solo adventure, using the time machine to travel to the heart of an ancient civilization, driven by an insatiable quest for knowledge. However, as you get more immersed in their culture, your presence acts as a catalyst for change. The butterfly effect paradox unfolds as even the tiniest change in the timeline ripples outward, causing unanticipated repercussions. You resolve to change the course of history, haunted by the weight of your unintentional effect. However, you are confronted with the fate paradox. 
Since every attempt to prevent the unintended repercussions of your actions appears to inevitably lead to their fulfillment. Attempting to prevent a disaster becomes the spark that ensures its happening. And, burdened by these contradictions, you seek refuge in the annals of old thought. You come upon the dilemma of endless causality among ancient books and disintegrating manuscripts. It proposes that an unending loop of cause and effect can form in the ever-expanding tapestry of time, sustaining itself with no discernible start or end. You realize that time is not linear but rather a tangled web of interconnected possibilities that defies mortal comprehension. As you go through time, paradox after paradox, you are intrigued and humbled by the infinite complexities that time reveals. Each mystery solved raises additional questions, forcing you deeper into the incomprehensible abyss of temporal mysteries. As a result, with each stride forward, you become a living monument to existence's paradoxical essence, endlessly seeking the elusive truths of time while being caught within its limitless enigmas. Time travel, you see, can be a bizarre adventure, full of twists and turns that challenge our conventional understanding. The complications of temporal paradoxes remind us that the process of traversing time itself is fraught with complexities. Questions arise as we explore deeper into the domain of time travel. Why did these contradictions emerge? Is it feasible to travel through time without encountering such paradoxes? Following Albert Einstein's work, physicists began to pay considerable consideration to the possibility of time travel in the early years of the 20th century. When Einstein developed his theory of special relativity, which was published in 1905, he combined the ideas of space and time into a single four-dimensional entity, space-time, and enforce the rule that particles with mass would require infinite energy to accelerate at the speed of light. This sparked conjecture about hypothetical massless particles known as tachyons, which could exceed the speed of light but, as a result, would travel back in time. We are currently unaware of anything that can travel faster than the speed of light. Because light has no mass, it does not grow in size as it accelerates. Meanwhile, an object with mass gains mass as it accelerates, implying that it lacks the energy to keep up with the speed of light. As a result of everything in our world moving slower than the speed of light, every cause that occurs inside our known universe occurs within the time limitations of the speed of light. A tachyon, on the other hand, is a particle that, in principle, travels faster than the speed of light. The tachyon must somehow maintain a constant speed faster than the speed of light, which means it can never go slower. That's a tall order for the time being. But this is when time travel comes into play. If you can travel faster than the speed of light, you can theoretically convey communications faster than time, implying that you can send a message backward. That communication may then reach you before you have even considered sending the original message. It's a little puzzling. While this allowed physicists to consider time travel, Einstein would violently shatter that imaginary door ten years later when he developed the theory of general relativity. General relativity, which is primarily a theory that describes the influence of mass on spacetime, suggests that four-dimensional spacetime can be twisted into any shape. This suggests that a closed time-like curve could be formed by creating a path that forms a loop traveling back through time, returning to its original beginning place. The concept of time travel posed a major challenge to causality, the relationship between cause and effect, by allowing an effect to precede its own cause, a blatant contradiction. Although the bootstrap paradox is more nuanced, there is no starting point in the process. Instead, the paradox implies the possibility of predestination to causality, or the belief that the past is influenced by the future. The many worlds theory has been proposed as a way to avoid paradoxes like the grandfather paradox. When the time traveler kills her grandfather, she is just forcing a transition into a different reality, or branch of the wave function, from the one she came from. That means that a time traveler riding a closed time-like curve into the past causes the universe to diverge, and the world she arrives in is different from the one she left. As a result, in the past, she kills a version of her grandfather who will never have a kid or grandchild. As a result, the birth of our time traveler is not stopped. Returning to our earlier example, in the case of the bootstrap paradox, 
Our buddy does not pass the information for building a time machine to her earlier self, but to a version of herself in the past in an other reality. This means that each backward leap sends information to a new universe. Nonetheless, this does not fully resolve the bootstrap paradox because it does not explain where this information originated in the first place. The instructions for the time machine still lack an origin point. As previously stated, if you can travel faster than the speed of light, you could theoretically deliver signals quicker than time. In truth, time travel is not only feasible, but has actually occurred. It doesn't appear to be your usual sci-fi picture. The lifetime travel occurs as a result of time dilation, which is a characteristic of Einstein's special relativity. The acceleration of an item increases as it approaches the center of a gravitational field, such as the Earth's core. This is due to the core having the greatest gravitational force. According to Einstein's theory, time flows slower for items closer to the center of the Earth, and time slows down as you move faster through space. A number of investigations have validated this hypothesis of time dilation, including the famous thought experiment, Twin Paradox, in which one twin travels at high speed aboard a spaceship while the other remains on Earth. The traveling twin will have aged less than the twin who remained on Earth when he or she returns. A spectacular illustration of time dilation can be found in the film Interstellar. Matthew McConaughey and his team land on a planet near a black hole, which creates a massive gravitational field. Time slows down dramatically for the crew on the planet due to the black hole's massive gravitational effect. As a result, one hour spent on the planet corresponds to seven years on Earth. When the group returns to Earth, they discover that Matthew McConaughey's daughter has grown into an old woman, although he appears to have aged very little. So, why haven't we made substantial advances in time? The solution is found in velocity. To transport a human into the future, we would need to either harness the massive gravitational power of a black hole or travel at near light speeds. These harsh circumstances are required to overcome the limitations that currently prevent us from traveling forward in time. However, such achievements have already been accomplished at the subatomic level by the European Organization for Nuclear Research's Large Hadron Collider. This amazing particle accelerator drives subatomic particles into the future on a regular basis. When protons are accelerated to 99.99% of the speed of light, their relative time slows down around 6,900 times when compared to stationary human observers. This groundbreaking experiment shows that changing velocity can change the passage of time on a subatomic scale. Scientists offer a simple method for transporting humans to the future. Consider the following scenario, you want to visit Earth in the year 3000. All you have to do is board a starship and travel at 99.995% the speed of light. Imagine a person embarking on such a journey to a planet 500 light years away, such as Kepler 186f. It would take them around 500 years to reach their goal if they traveled at almost the speed of light. They would then turn around and return to Earth, which would take another 500 years. As a result, the total journey duration would be around 1000 years. As a result, when they return, it will be the year 3023 on Earth. However, due to their great velocity, they would experience an intriguing phenomenon known as time dilation. Time appears to pass differently for them than for folks on Earth. Their internal clock would slow dramatically, ticking at a rate one hundredth of that of the clocks back home. Surprisingly, they would only live approximately 10 years, whereas we would have lived for millennia. Despite the possibility of future technology enabling such excursions into the future at near light speed, it appears improbable that time dilation could be used to travel back in time and share their discoveries. Interstellar travel at near light speed allows for incredible jumps into the future, but it is a one-way trip that advances rather than reverses time. If we can't employ time dilation to travel back in time, does it mean the past is forever out of reach? Perhaps not. Einstein and physicist Nathan Rosen proposed using an Einstein-Rosen bridge, a form of wormhole, to travel back in time. Wormholes are theorized twisted portions of spacetime that connect two distant points in space. On the tiniest scales, 
We have microscopic minuscule quantum fluctuations in the fabric of spacetime in our known universe. These contain both positive and negative energy swings, which are frequently quite near to one another. A extremely strong, dense, positive energy fluctuation would curve space in one direction, whereas a very strong, dense, negative energy fluctuation would curve space in the other direction. If you connected these two curvature zones, you could briefly get at the concept of a quantum wormhole. If the wormhole was large enough, you could even move a particle through it, allowing it to disappear from one spot in spacetime and emerge in another. Einstein's calculations revealed that if this bridge in space was stable enough, it might theoretically connect two places in time. Even an Einstein-Rosen bridge cannot be utilized to travel back in time at the moment since it does not live long enough and is unstable. Even if it were stable, it would necessitate other physics, which we lack. Exotic physical attributes of hypothetical particles and states of matter that would break existing physical principles, such as a particle with a negative mass. Some wormholes may be navigable, allowing humans to travel through them. However, they must be suitably large and kept open against the force of gravity, which tries to close them. To push spacetime outward in this fashion, massive amounts of negative energy would be required. Negative energy is known to exist, and small amounts have already been created in the lab. We also know that negative energy is at the root of the universe's rapid expansion. So nature may have discovered a technique to create wormholes. Wormholes have a powerful hold on our collective imagination. They are, in some ways, a pleasant type of escape. Unlike black holes, which may confine anything that enters them, wormholes may allow us to travel to distant destinations faster than the speed of light. They could even be time machines, allowing for backward travel, as hypothesized by the late Stephen Hawking in his final book. Wormholes, black holes, cosmic strings, and circulating light beams have all been proposed as potential time travel solutions. The main problem that astrophysicists are trying to solve is how to beat a light beam to a point in spacetime and back. While wormholes exist within Einstein's theories of relativity, they have yet to be detected in space, and scientists have no definitive evidence that these cosmic bypasses would even exist. If a negative mass or negative energy is real, abundant, and controlled in the cosmos, many weird things become possible, but traveling backward in time may be the most outlandish one we've ever imagined. Because of the peculiarities of both special and general relativity, time travel to the past may not be prohibited after all. Time appears to have a defined direction, as if it were a one-way street, the past is fixed and immutable and it is only accessible through recollection or written documents. The future, on the other hand, is unclear and undetermined. While we can foretell the future, we lack specific evidence or proof of what is to come. Many of the incidents we witness are unreversible. We can easily break an egg, but it is difficult, if not impossible, to unbreak it once it has been shattered. This unidirectional march of time appears natural and it is difficult to conceive it going any other way. This one-way orientation, known as the arrow of time, gives us the impression that time is passing and that we are traveling through various moments. Sir Arthur Eddington, a British astronomer and scientist, pioneered the concept of the arrow of time in 1927. He noticed that this arrow of time would apply to us as well as an alien race on the far side of the universe. It is not determined by human genetics or psyche, but rather by the essence of the cosmos itself. The arrow of time is not the same as time itself. Rather, it is a property of the cosmos and its contents as a result of its evolution. The arrow of time, in simplest words, illustrates the unidirectional movement of time from the past to the future. It is a basic feature of the cosmos influencing how we perceive the passage of time and the progression of events. Much of the apparent difference in the flow of time, which is why humans sense time as moving forward, can be traced to thermodynamic principles, notably the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that, in isolated or closed systems, the overall disorder, or entropy, will constantly rise or remain constant throughout time. Stephen Hawking, a theoretical physicist and cosmologist, 
also argued in his book, A Brief History of Time, that the increase of disorder or entropy is what distinguishes the past from the future, giving time a direction. In the 1870s, physicist Ludwig Boltzmann investigated the idea of entropy and the tendency of organized systems to disintegrate. Entropy is defined as the tendency of objects like matter and energy to scatter or become more random. Heat, for example, constantly transfers from a hotter object to a cooler environment, objects mix but do not separate on their own, and neglected constructions fall over time. It is crucial to remember, however, that in non-closed systems, entropy can decrease briefly or locally. The development of particular crystals, living systems that reduce entropy locally while increasing it in the surrounding environment, and the formation of stars and planets from gas and dust pockets are all examples of entropy reduction. Despite these isolated instances of order, the universe's overall trend is towards increasing disorder. Surprisingly, even as large-scale structures such as galaxies and clusters form in the universe, total entropy grows. Even massive and compact black holes have astonishingly high entropy, accounting for the vast bulk of entropy in today's cosmos. It is worth emphasizing that the universe's comparatively smooth early shape really represents low total entropy. Smoothness does not imply high entropy. Randomness and lumpiness, as seen in our contemporary cosmos, are instead features of high entropy. Entropy is an important factor in understanding why we can't travel back in time. In many physical processes, the increase in entropy is responsible for the observable irreversibility and asymmetry of time. Entropy can be seen in action as we go about our daily lives. Those in our bodies deteriorate and die, dust collects on surfaces, and heat from our coffee dissipates into the surrounding environment. Due to the increase in entropy, reversing these processes and collecting all of the scattered heat energy back into the coffee cup is exceedingly unlikely. The difference between the past and the future can be found in our interactions with the world. It is our point of view and how we react to the world. It is a fallacy to believe that something exists independently when, in fact, it is defined by its relationship between here and there. Similarly, the passage of time involves a perceptual component. It is influenced by our interactions with the environment around us. Everything I just said about entropy and time asymmetry may appear complicated. Let's make it simple. Consider time to be a river that flows in only one direction. Consider standing on the bank of a river, watching the water flow by. The river signifies time as it flows forward indefinitely. You can watch the water move and feel its current, much as we see the progression of events in our life. The river transports numerous objects as it flows. These items represent events, experiences, and even the particles that comprise our universe. Time, like the river, moves these occurrences ahead, adding them to the ever-growing stream of the river. Now, attempting to swim against the stream and returning to a former spot in the river would be quite difficult. Swimming upstream is practically impossible due to the river's intensity and direction of flow. Similarly, the arrow of time, which is driven by entropy, makes reversing the sequence of events and returning to the past extremely difficult. While we have memories and records of the past, the actual passage of time propels us forward. We cannot modify the passage of time, just as we cannot change the course of the river. It creeps relentlessly forward, dragging us along with it. To better grasp time, imagine it as a river flowing in a straight line. It aids in our understanding of time's irreversibility and the difficulties we experience while attempting to travel against its natural current. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle thought time to be a basic part of nature. Time, according to him, is the measurement of motion and change. Time, according to Aristotle, is inextricably linked to the physical world and is determined by the movement and succession of objects and occurrences. He held that time only existed in relation to these changes, emphasizing the link between time and the development of the universe. Moving forward in time, we come across René Descartes, a 17th century French philosopher. Descartes considered time to be a crucial component of our mental experiences. He suggested that our sense of time is caused by the operations of our minds. 
Descartes contended that our internal feeling of duration is the foundation of our understanding of time, emphasizing the subjective aspect of our temporal experiences. Moving on, we come upon Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher of the 18th century. Kant investigated the nature of time and its relationship to our perception of the universe. He saw time as a necessary framework imposed by our minds in order to make sense of our sensory experiences. Kant defines time as a subjective framework through which we organize our observations, allowing us to form a coherent view of the external world. Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher, presented a distinct perspective on time in the 19th century. Time, according to Nietzsche, is a human creation that determines our understanding of reality. He contended that our cultural and societal contexts shape our view of time. Nietzsche questioned the traditional linear concept of time, emphasizing the subjective and interpretive nature of temporal events. We advance to the 20th century, where we meet Martin Heidegger, a German philosopher who probed thoroughly into the concept of time. According to Heidegger, our understanding of time is not restricted to simple measurement or sequence. He claimed that time is the basic root of our existence, influencing who we are and how we live in the world. According to Heidegger, time is a complicated interaction of past, present, and future that unfolds via our contact with the world, rather than a linear progression. These philosophers reflect only a small part of the vast tapestry of beliefs on time that has existed throughout philosophy's history. Their views provide us with a variety of perspectives, challenging our previous beliefs and prompting further thought. As we consider their ideas, we are reminded of the breadth and complexities of the subject of time, encouraging us to investigate it with intellectual curiosity and philosophical awe. Philosophers and physicists have dealt with fundamental concerns about time throughout history, frequently leading to contentious and unsolved inquiries. One such puzzling issue is, when is it truly now? The relativity of simultaneity, posited by Einstein's special relativity theory, contradicts our common understanding of simultaneous events. A moment experienced by one observer moving at high speeds may not perfectly match with a moment experienced by another observer in a different frame of reference due to the effects of time dilation. The effects of this phenomena make it impossible to determine the same time at two separate sites definitively, presenting puzzling uncertainty. Furthermore, our sense of the present is fraught with ambiguity. When we examine objects or people, the light that enters our eyes contains information from the past, creating a time lag between the actual event and our perception. As a result, now becomes a localized concept, a bubble in which we reside. Even our observations of distant celestial bodies are affected by this delay since the light from those objects takes a long time to reach us. The traditional understanding of time as a linear flow is being challenged by modern science. Instead, it displays a dynamic interaction between gravity and time. Gravitational time dilation, a result of general relativity, shows that time moves more slowly in the presence of strong gravitational fields. This means that clocks in space, where gravity is lower, tick slightly quicker than clocks on Earth. This fascinating effect affects not only time, but also the behavior of physical systems. Things in space may work at greater frequencies, and biological processes, such as flower blooming, may occur at a faster rate. The influence of mass is the primary cause of this temporal disparity. Massive objects, such as planets and black holes, strain the fabric of spacetime, causing time to stretch or warp. This gravitational time dilation is visible as a variation in the measured passage of time between locations with different gravitational fields. As we consider the nature of time, we are confronted with contentious issues that call into question our notion of reality. Is time genuinely passing or flowing? Is the present a global phenomena or a regional construct? How does the interaction of gravity and time impact our understanding of the universe? These inquiries urge us on, inviting us to dive deeper into the fascinating realm of temporal existence. In conclusion, finally, the study of time continues to awe and intrigue us, asking us to consider our role in the great tapestry of cosmic events. While we may not have all of the answers, the search of understanding time reveals an enthralling journey of discovery.
pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and enticing us to ponder the intricate interplay of the world and our temporal experiences.